so this is going to be a video on my helmet collection because this is a bit bigger than the last time I did one because I've got a few more helmets. Now, apologies in advance, but some of these helmets I won't know the exact name of because I've seen them on eBay and bought them. Often the sellers didn't know what they were or whatever else. So first up I have what I believe is a Mark II uh, British helmet, um, often known as Tommy helmets or Brody helmets. Um, what's interesting of this one is it appears to be almost totally round, where a lot of these are actually a bit, you know, more shaped. Um, this, the interesting thing of these is that it has the asbestos liner in these apparently. Also, because I need to keep these helmets stored most of the time, apologies if they're a bit dusty or cobwebby, but I don't care because I actually have to make room for them, I've not got a dedicated museum room. Um, so let's put this on and I'll assume I'll get this the right way around, maybe not, but... So this is a pretty iconic helmet obviously, um, similar to medieval kettle helmets in a way. But these helmets are very straightforward, basically obviously protects the head and you know a bit the shoulders from this bit, uh, ridge from shrapnel air bursting above you. Um, I'll go into this again just in this video, but the point of these helmets is generally to protect the wearer from shrapnel, not bullets. So, um, you know, with these helmets, obviously bear that in mind, the, they were not designed, although some of them could stop bullets, uh, especially like pistol rounds, things that didn't have much power. Um, they were always designed to stop shrapnel as the main priority. So if somebody says this helmet's crap because it doesn't stop bullets, etc., they don't really know what they're talking about. So, yep, this is a fairly standard helmet. Obviously, these, primarily the Mark 1s, were designed in World War One, um, And then, you know, the Mark II was a slightly improved one. As I said, I believe this is a Mark II, but there seems to be a lot of variation in these helmets anyway, due to, I guess, how many factories are making them. Um, you know, so there's a bit of variation there. So, pretty straightforward. You've got that liner that goes around like that. It's screwed into the helmet at the top there. And then you've got this kind of semi-elasticated adjustable strap. Pretty simple setup, but it works. So, what I also have is another variation of the same helmet. Now, maybe this isn't a particular, maybe this one isn't actually a British one, as you see, there's no liner in this one. But what's interesting on this one, I just noticed, it says VR56 by the look of it. So, if that's a year of production, um, don't think the camera's going to really make that out on there. It's just there, but. Uh, this is obviously a post World War 2 one, which is interesting. So, without a liner on, obviously, it comes down a bit too far on your head. But primarily the same helmet design because you can see in there where you would screw in the liner. So these are very iconic helmets, obviously the Mark I and Mark II I think America used as well during World War I and early start of World War II before they replaced it with the M1 helmet. Now I'll get you the M1 helmet next but bear in mind my M1 helmet is not an American one, it's either a Norwegian or a Danish sort of licensed copy of an M1 so let me get that now. Okay, so the famous M1 style helmet. Now I'm just seeing, ah, uh, this is a Danish one because it says CF on the inside, which is stamped on all the Danish stuff. So basically, these M1 helmets were pretty good design for World War II when America came up with them. So you've got two bits to this helmet. Now if I can get it out, there we go. They have an inner plastic kind of uh, shell, and I think this material of this varied depending on the generation of the helmet. Then you've got the outer shell. You see there's a bit of newspaper stuck to the inside where it was packed with newspaper. So the point of these is basically that you didn't have to compromise the strength of the helmet to put screws in for the liner because you could actually have the liner you know, built into the thing. So there's actually two straps to this. I think there's basically a chin strap that's on this liner itself that's kind of tucked out of the way at the moment and I can't get it out down properly. Uh, if I pull this bit up, there's a clip here, I might be able to get it out. but. I don't want to spend too long on each helmet on this video or it will go on forever. So, I think I've almost got them out. There we go. Right, now let's resecure that clasp. There you go. You've got two straps to this helmet. So, put this on. You've got whatever this strap's meant to be, like an adjustable little chin strap. But then you've got the main strap of the helmet there. Now, this isn't a particularly nice clasp on this one. But, can I get that on without adjusting it? Uh, no, I'll leave that be for now. But this is obviously the famous kind of American style helmet. Like I said, a very good helmet design for when it was made. Covers most of the head. Um, as you can see, you know, not much to say about it. As I said, the removable liner is a really good idea um, because it means you don't have to screw into the helmet, which compromises the strength of the helmet a little bit by doing that. Um, obviously, one of the world's most famous helmets, the M1, because America used it from World War II till 
pretty much Vietnam and the 1980s when the Pascot eventually replaced it. But overall, yeah, it gives very good head protection, um, very iconic design. But obviously I've got some more World War II helmets as well and some interwar ones, so let me get those down now. Right, now for one of the most iconic helmets in history, but mine's badly damaged and rusted, but I didn't want to spend a fortune on it. It's a Stahlhelm. Um, I think this is probably an M40 Stahlhelm. It could also be an M38. As said, I'm not an expert. But this is the rusted outer shell of one. No liner or anything in there. Uh, crack in the helmet there, as you can see. Looks like, and crack on that side. Looks like it's probably seen some action. But, you know, that is the famous German helmet from World War II, basically. Um, again, this is a very good helmet design. I mean, the metal is a bit thinner than some of the other World War II helmets, so it offers less head protection in that way. But the shape of the Stauhelm is very iconic, because um, as you can see, it's cut to a very good shape to offer the maximum head protection, but not lacking visibility sort of problem. So, you know, very, very good helmet design. But what I also have, again, missing liner, sadly, is a Swiss Stauhelm. Um, did I say Swiss? I mean Swiss. Um, this is, I think, called the M1918 Stauhelm. Um, a bit more like the World War I German Stauhelms. It's a big, bit, bit bigger, looks more like a coal scuttle. Um, but again, you can see that Stauhelm shape to it. Um, this one reminds me a bit of Darth Vader. Now, because it's got not got a liner in, I need to be very careful putting this on because it's going to hook into my head a little bit. Um, but as you can see, it looks like that. Obviously, if it had a liner in, it wouldn't be so far down on my head. But let's get that up. As you can see, it's got the hooks for the liner in there. But again, looks like a perfectly competent helmet design, even if a bit big. Should give you very good protection to your head. But as you can see, where the kind of vent holes are, I guess, is where you'd have bits of the liner attached. But I guess in this one, you could have probably attached the entire liner to those hooks there. Um, a5493 is on the inside of it. As like I said, it's a cool looking helmet. Um, like I said, not loads I can say about them. But very cool design. Very strange design in a sense. But I guess it would give good head protection. Now for three helmets I all believe to be the same type. Um, basically these are Mark III to Mark V British helmets. Now I believe this might be a Mark IV, this one here. Because um, I'm not an expert on telling these um, apart, but as far as I'm aware, if it's not got a big screw bit on the top, it's not a Mark III. Um, it looks more like it's secured on the inside of this helmet there, rather than having a big screw through the top. But these were basically the helmets Britain used after, um, well, during World War II to replace the Mark IIs. So, let's get my chin strap over. So the idea is it gives much better head protection than the um, previous Jenner helmets, uh, mostly just because it covers more of the head. Um, again, not the most comfortable helmet in the world. I think these are often nicknamed the tortoise helmets, but as far as I understand it, the Mark III is like um, this shape of helmet, but it's got this big screw going through the top. And again, I'm not an expert, so correct me if I'm wrong, preferably in a polite way. Um, the Mark IV was uh, what I think this is, basically, um, where they'd you know, not really got a big screw. There is a, something going through here, but I think that's more like a rivet than a big screw. And then there's a much rarer Mark V one you can find, and as far as I'm aware of the Mark V, um, that was just basically where it had a very modern updated liner in, but they're quite rare. You can find photos of them, but I've never ever seen one for sale, so I guess they were rare, but... The Mark V is obviously a very limited thing between these ones and the um, Mark VI ballistic nylon helmet. So here's another one. This one is missing a liner, but you can see there there's kind of um, a thing there where you could attach the helmet liner to. That's obviously the strap points. And the other one we've got, which is the most interesting one, is another one missing the liner and everything. But this one has a hammer and sickle printed on the front, but I do believe it's a British Mark III helmet. So Lots of people came up with ideas for why this might look this way. Some people thought maybe this was sent to the Soviets on Lend-Lease and they put a hammer and sickle on it to identify it as theirs. Uh, some people thought it was a prop used in a film or a stage production, which could be true. And other people said it could have been used in war games where British soldiers were playing Soviet soldiers and they painted the helmet and put the hammer and sickles on them to identify them as like enemy forces opposing forces in the war games. Any of those are possible, really. No idea, because each of them sounds as valid as the other, and unless I see a photo where you can directly, you know, see it's that helmet kind of thing from the thing, I don't know. But anyway, 
These are, you know, the Mark III to Mark V helmets. I believe most of these are Mark IVs, but again, correct me if I'm wrong, because, um, you know, of how the sort of inner system would have worked. But again, that was Britain's helmet from pretty much partway through World War II, uh, although my grandfather who fought in World War II just had the Mark II helmet throughout the entire thing, so not everybody got those helmets. I guess it was prioritised more for frontline infantry. And then, sort of, that helmet was used up until about the 1980s when the Mark VI replaced them, but as said, it was just over time the inner sort of liners improved and everything, but the helmet shell stayed the same. Because that was something for ages, I couldn't tell, you know, the Mark IVs, three, IV, four, and five helmets apart, and then somebody was basically like, it's mostly just the liner inside that changed, not the helmet itself. Okay, so let's have a look at some more Cold War helmets before we move on. Now, if you're wondering why this helmet looks so beat up, it's because the liner was broken in it when I got it, but um, I've shot it quite a few times. Now, I believe this is a Hungarian helmet, um, but I'm not sure on the exact model, because I've heard there's like the Hungarian M50 and other models, but basically, this was during the Cold War, one of the helmets Communist Hungary had, but these are all very closely based on the Soviet, I think it's SSH-40 helmet, or M Soviet M40 helmet. Again, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understand, lots of Warsaw Pact co uh, countries used the, you know, Soviet-style helmet, and then they often made little adaptions to them, and I believe this is a Hungarian one, because I've had people get very funny over this helmet before going, no, it's this exact model, or no, it's that model. So, as I said, apologies in advance. I think the strap system is the slightly improved later generation of this helmet, but, like, with lots of these helmets, Often they can look identical in places with a couple of minor details. So unless you're a helmet nerd, you're not really going to know what differentiates them unless you find lots of forums or whatever where people can all agree on what makes them different. Because I've often seen, like with the Mark I and Mark II helmets, people somewhere will say this is what separates a Mark I from Mark II, and then elsewhere people say no, it's something else. But anyway, this is what I believe is a Hungarian M50 or later generation of Hungarian sort of helmet from the Cold War. Yeah, a pretty competent design, very similar to the American M1 kind of helmet. Um, you know, you've got all the important parts of your head covered. When I've seen videos of people testing these helmets, often they actually can stop a lot of pistol rounds at a few yards range, so, you know, better than you might expect. Um, the liner isn't the most comfortable in the world, but it's not awful. Um, you know, a lot of people would get old helmets like this and then they put nicer liners in and restore them. Um, so we're going to just jump to a different room where I've got it on display and go to another Cold War helmet and then we'll be on to like the modern era of helmets. Right, it's probably quite hard for me to get a good angle on this, but that's an East German M56 helmet and I believe it was the last generation of it because it's got some plastic bits in the liner. Now, you'll probably know the East German helmet, despite looking a bit funny and traffic cone shaped, was probably the best of the Cold War helmets. The reason being that the thickness of the steel and the shape of the helmet actually meant it was very good at deflecting rounds and shrapnel. So, um, while the technology of the helmet being steel isn't much better than any of the others, the shape of it um, being quite conical actually was, you know, gave you a much better degree of protection than other helmets. What I'm just going to try and do is get this uh, camera, apologies for that because I'm holding the tripod, round the side so you can see a bit of what it's shaped like but it's, you know, quite conical, as I said. Now, the other funny thing with the um, East German helmet um, was there, lots of people think this is a World War II design that Hitler rejected. Now, as far as I'm aware, that's the East German M54 helmet, not the M56, which this is. Um, the M54 looking a bit more like a Stauhelm, but the M56 is the mass-produced one. As I said, this is a later generation of it, but because East Germany used it from, I guess, 1956 to 1989, 1990 sort of time, um, what generally changed on these helmets was just the liners improved over time. As you can see, that's quite a competent liner system on there. Um, it's got foam in it, it's got plastic in it, it's got leather straps. Overall, a very good liner system. Right, let's cut to the modern day then. Okay, so what we've got now is the British Mark VI helmet, and this is kind of a notorious helmet for being so crap. So, the Mark VI helmet, it looks like it's got sort of a more advanced liner in it, and it should be really comfortable and everything. The problem of the Mark VI helmet is it's made of ballistic nylon. Now, this sounds like it's a big step up, right? You think, oh, ballistic nylon, that's like the precursor to Kevlar, that's great. Now, ballistic nylon was very good in flak jackets in the days when, you know, ballistic nylon was used in flak jackets. Um, the problem is it wasn't so great in these helmets. So the idea was that ballistic nylon was lighter than um, steel, so, you know, Britain could have a helmet that offered probably better protection and weighed less. 
The reality is it didn't. Now, this is probably as useful as um, wet toilet paper in terms of a helmet. It's better than having no helmet, don't get me wrong, um, but there's lots and lots of tests that have been done on these helmets of various things, and they generally always fail. Now, there's a couple of generations of this. This is an original Mark VI from the 80s, um, ballistic nylon. This one's actually got mounts for a, like a riot visor on it. Um, then there was the Mark VI-A, which was made out of black um, plastic on the outside, not green, and that was Kevlar, so it was a bit better. It was where they updated the helmet to have a Kevlar, you know, um, or majority Kevlar liner and, or, you know, filler in the inside rather than ballistic nylon. Um, but they were replaced with Mark VII helmets, which I'll show you in a moment. The problem with these helmets, as I said, is they're not really designed to be ballistic helmets in a sense, although I think this one kind of was. Um, the issue is, when Americans um, shoot these helmets on YouTube, they perform worse than the World War II helmets that were not designed to offer ballistic protection. So basically, my point is, like, with the American M1 helmet and, like, the Soviet M40 helmet and all of those, um, there's lots of videos in the East German M56, there's lots of videos of people shooting those at, like, 9mm 45 ACP and finding the majority of the time the helmet, you know, causes the round to deflect or it gets stuck in the helmet. With these, every single test I've seen, uh, it goes through front and back. So, um, you know, it, this doesn't really offer you any kind of ballistic protection at all. It might have been adequate from shrapnel, because as, as I said, most helmets were designed for that. Um, it just says Helmet Combat um, Mark VI on there. Not much more info there. But... This is a 1986 model. As I said, these replaced the sort of Mark III to Mark V helmets in British service. It looks good, you know, and everything like that, but it turns out it wasn't that good. So let's see what replaced this one. Now, the next couple of helmets I'm getting are gonna have um, liners and everything on them and a bit of scrim netting, so sadly you won't see the entire original helmet. Um, but this is a British Mark VII helmet, where on the inside, looks very similar to a Mark VI, but better. Um, now this is definitely a better helmet than the Mark VI. There's a bit of question over how good these actually are. If I had to wear a helmet I'd definitely choose it over the Mark VI any day. But I've got other helmets which supposedly offer much better protection. So one thing I will say of this helmet, it's very comfortable. Um, very comfortable indeed. The liner is very good on it. So let me just get that chin strap done up with both buttons. So, as you can see, proper chin strap. My ears are actually around both sides of there, so that offers good protection. Uh, the helmet's cut to an interesting shape, so, you know, you can see stuff like that. It's cut round like that, so you can see out better. So, basically, the Mark 6A, which was the Kevlar version of the Mark 6 as a stopgap, this was replaced by the Mark 7. Now, what I've heard from people is that this isn't necessarily fully Kevlar, like they might have cheaped out on them. And it's partially Kevlar, partially ballistic nylon, meaning it's not as good as American helmets and things like that. So, again, much better than some of the other helmets. I have seen pictures of these with bullets stuck in them, where they obviously protected the wearer from being shot. So, you know, I don't think this is totally useless like the Mark VI would have been. But, as other people have said, you know, they might not be as good as other helmets on the market if you're looking for a modern helmet. However, I can't really fault this in terms of comfort. It's very good. Um, this is a large one, and it seems larger. These helmets fit me fairly well, um, because I've got the same problem with helmets as I have with shoe size. Um, ones that are meant to be in universal sizes, often, you know, I take completely different sizes. So there you go. This is the Mark 7. It's got its MTP uh, liner on. Interestingly, Mark 7 helmets just take Mark 6 um, helmet covers, um, you know, that's they didn't have a properly cut one, they, you can just get a Mark VI to fit it fairly well. And then I've wrapped a scrim net around it. It's also got some of this sort of Hessian cut out stuff. Um, I think these might have been actually properly manufactured, but some people said it's where soldiers cut up old ragged uniforms and kind of stitched it into the helmet cover. Either way, works pretty well. Um, I've used this one in camo tests and it actually makes with the scrim net down over your face, it actually makes you pretty hard to see if you're stood in the tree line or bushes with this on. But Mark VII helmet, like I said, can't really fault it personally. Some people don't like these. Britain's supposedly replacing this now only a few years after getting it with a much more expensive American helmet, which isn't even a top of the line helmet, so seems a bit of a waste of money to be doing that in my opinion. Um, if you're going to replace this, at least replace it with something truly modern, you know, that offers a much better level of protection, not a marginally better Kevlar helmet. Um, speaking of Kevlar helmets, 
here's my only proper Kevlar helmet. This is um, a commando helmet, which is an armed police helmet, and it's a Kevlar 3A rated one, which you might be able to just about see on the label in there. I've got a Flecton liner over it, and um, a scrim net as well put into this. But the um, commando helmet is what the armed police use. Now, this is the second gen of the commando helmet, which I believe is a commando lightweight helmet. Gen 1 of commando helmets were basically um, just American Pascot helmets. Um, I think also known as M88 helmets. Because, as I said, America did a much better idea in the Cold War. In the 80s, when they replaced their steel helmets, they actually went to proper Kevlar helmets, which they improved over time. The Pascot has now been replaced by several other helmets, which are very similar in design. Just downsized a bit and offer better protection. I believe the one they're now swapping out is either called the Advanced Combat Helmet or the Enhanced Combat Helmet. Um, you know, because always picking names that are similar is annoying of these kind of things. But the idea is that they're moving away from Kevlar and now going to thermal plastics, which apparently, you know, for the same weight and size, offer better protection. So if those work great, it'll be good if more countries make helmets like that. But anyway, this is level 3A Kevlar rated, which basically means it will stop almost any pistol round at pretty close range. I guess it's 7 yards. Um, so it means that, you know, pistol rounds shot from both pistols and submachine guns should be stopped by this helmet. Um, and I guess at very long range it might stop a round coming in from a 7.62 rifle or something, or 5.56 if it's coming in at a funny angle and very far away. But as usual, at close range it's not going to do anything to protect your head from a rifle round, you're still going to get your head ventilated. Um, that's important to bear in mind. Helmets have come a long way in terms of protection, but they're still not going to protect you from somebody shooting you point blank with a full on, you know, military rifle at point blank range. They can basically stop from sh you uh, protect you against shrapnel and pistols. But for um, kind of SWAT team use, which is sort of what these are for armed response use, it makes sense that it protects you from pistol rounds. You know, it probably protects you from buckshot and birdshot as well. Even if it stopped a slug, I imagine the kinetic force would kill you or break your neck. So, you know, there's always downsides to this. Again, the Russians have made titanium combat helmets, which offer a better level of protection. Um, but those are very expensive to find and pretty rare. And you have to be very careful when ordering those, you don't get a fake. So speaking of the police, let's now look at two other police helmets I have. Okay, riot helmets. What we have here is an Argus, which I believe is called a Mark I riot helmet. Um, it had a neck protector at the back, which I've taken off because it's Velcro. I don't like having those on personally. The inside, as you can see, is kind of like a polystyrene thing. So let's get this on. So it's just got a simple chin strap system. Now, these helmets are meant to have a little bit of room between your head and the helmet. The reason being it's so um, less of the impact from a blow goes into your head. So this is basically just a fiberglass shell uh, reinforced around the edges. And then you've got your polycarbonate visor. Now the visor is pretty strong, as you can see there's air rifle and pistol crossbow impacts where I've tested this helmet, protects you fine. How this um, visor works, it's got a bit of rubber around the edge of the visor um, and that's designed to stop chemicals and things or like molotovs being thrown into the helmet from above all the sides. So um, you know, that works pretty well. However I've got the Mark III helmet which is a big step up. There's some things I like more about the Mark I helmet, other things I like more about the Mark III, um, because I don't have a Mark II, but that's like kind of somewhere in between these two helmets. But again, being Britain, they can't seem to actually design something that's a step, you know, an improvement in every way. It's kind of two steps forward, one step back. They make a couple of improvements, and then they have to make something not work as well. So anyway, let me now show you the Mark III helmet. So overall very similar but the main thing you might notice is in the top the helmet's not actually completely shaped um, you know like round at the top but as you can see the visor is much thicker and more secure uh, the insides a bit more kind of you know got a better line it did have a extra bit of liner in there but I've taken it out if you've watched my previous videos on the helmet you'll know that my issue with this helmet was I ordered one in my size um, it's labeled for my size but it didn't actually fit me so I had to get a sander, sand down the inside of the impact kind of stuff in the inside of the helmet. And then, um, you know, it actually kind of fits me, but I left the foam off because I didn't see the point of reattaching it because it will just make the helmet a bit tighter again and I'd have to sand more off. Uh, in theory, if I sanded down enough, I could probably put that extra bit of foam in and it would be fairly comfortable, but it's good enough as is now. So, 
again, this helmet has a visor that's cut to a different shape, and I don't know if I actually like that, because while you might think, oh, that's a good idea, um, it means it's actually harder to use gas masks for this helmet, which is a bit annoying. Um, improved chin strap on this one, better reinforced edge around the helmet, and as you can see, the visor's got a big thicker metal band around it rather than a thinner bit of plastic, um, and it's also got you know the rubber around the plastic there to make it even harder for chemicals to get in. Supposedly these have an anti-fog um, thing on the helmet, but I think that's probably worn off of mine by now, because like the other helmet, it starts fogging up fairly quickly. But of course you could probably put your own thing back on there. Now, these riot helmets are not designed to offer ballistic protection at all. However, from what I've seen, they will stop, you know, pistol, crossbow bolts, um, air rifle pellets, probably shotgun um, shot from far enough away. But of course, obviously, things like double or buck, they're going to give you less protection from than something like, you know, number six shot or something like that because um, of how kinetic energy works. The polycarbonate visors on these are very strong. As I said, this one I've not taken the neck brace off. The idea of the neck brace is I think when you're, it just gives you additional protection from somebody swinging stuff into your neck. These are meant to be worn with obviously like the padded kind of stab proof riot armor. Um, so it should at that point, you know, give you good neck and all round protection. Um, but as I said, there's some improvements with this design or quite a few improvements, but quite a few things that are just strange and I don't like how they've done it. My main frustration, of course, being it wasn't the size it was advertised as. Um, in theory, it was only a couple of centimetres smaller than the other riot helmet, but in reality, it didn't fit anybody's head properly. I tried it on. But there you go, British Mark III riot helmet. You may have seen it in other videos. I also have a tank helmet. I'm not bothering to show that in this video because it's not really a combat protective helmet. It's just to stop you bashing your head in a tank. Um, but that's my entire helmet collection now, as far as I'm aware, unless I've missed anything. As I said, I don't collect helmets as much as gas masks because they take up more space and they're generally more expensive. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as I said, thank you for putting up with the fact that I don't know the names of all these helmets because there's so many variations. Sometimes I don't get much information, I just see a helmet that looks cool on eBay and I buy it. Um, but hopefully you've enjoyed the bit of a history lesson of my sort of random helmet collection.